Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this series on my Grandmaster training and journey to the Grandmaster title. This is episode number 11, and once again, my opponent is the unnamed I Hate Rook A4, a strong titled player with whom I have been sparring for this episode. There are three games, timestamps are on the video player, and the time format is a little bit faster, so you get more games in one video. All the games are interesting. I'm recording this after they already happened. Uh, and my next tournament is in 11 days, and then I don't know when my next tournament is after that, but I'm playing in New York City once again, so we're getting the training back up and coming. Uh, and that's it. Appreciate you all very much, and I'll see you at the end. All right, getting our first game going here. Uh, I gotta get some coffee before I do something stupid. Opponent plays e4. Uh, I still and only know one opening, so I'm gonna play the Karl Khan. Uh, at least, at least for competitive over the board chess, I am. I only know one opening, so I'm curious what he's gonna play. He likes this. He likes this. Not unexpected. Let's play d e4. Um, so I've played him a few times in the Tarta cover, and I. I haven't had a great run, honestly. Uh, so I'm going to play bishop f5 today. Uh, and bishop g6, which is the classical main line. He also likes to play knight h3, knight f4. So h4, h6. This is all very standard. He likes to play some knight h3, knight f4 variation, which I'm not... It's always a bit of a mystery to me. Um, okay, plays knight f3. I'm going to go for e6 rather than playing my knight to d7. e6 is a bit of a trendy line, uh, and it allows knight to e5. So it used to be that after knight f3, black would play knight d7. Uh, now, now, yeah, so he, he's kind of taking advantage of the fact that I haven't put my knight on d7. But this knight here is, if anything, it's just a target. So it, it leads to different positions. Queen h5 is not super scary. Uh, it's, you just play queen c7, and you never get checkmated. And then you just kick the queen out. So bishop c4, I think, is normal. Um, it, it also is, I think, pretty standard to play bishop d3, but I'm actually not sure you can play that anymore because queen takes d4. Although, I have to tell you, I'm... Admittedly, I, I, don't, I don't exactly remember. Uh, but I, I think... I think so. In general, oh, he plays it. Okay. Um... So queen d4, there's no bishop move that like is a is is a is a good discovered attack, but there is knight takes f7, and I'm trying to figure out if knight f7 is good. The point is that now he baits my king out into the open. I mean, the safest move here is ju is just is just to take on d3. Queen d4, knight f7, queen d4, knight f7, bishop takes d3. He has to take my rook, and then am I just a rook down there with like nothing to to talk about? I maybe I okay I mean I'm I'm gonna take I yeah well okay but that was I I, I gotta analyze that I don't want to like yeah you know, it's the first game of the video I don't want to <clears throat> I don't want to do something stupid and then regret it let's just play knight f6 knight d7 It'd be very embarrassing to lose a game like that um, if this was classical I would probably think there for like five minutes unfortunately here that is literally all of my allotted time. Uh, bishop f4, um, so knight d7 is a standard move. Also, bishop d6, queen c7 first. I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play knight d7. There also, I think, is some line you can play, like the bishop 2e7, uh, and then target this, this pawn. Uh, that's not happening right now, but it's a thing. Kind of like knight d5. I think knight d5 is a nice move. I just in general, this bishop here is very oddly placed. If I can win it, I'm happy. Well, not win it, but if I can trade it, I'm happy. Closing the center would be nice. And then I always have some just various ideas to bring my queen out here uh, and attack my opponent. My opponent, on the other hand, probably wants something like knight h5, wants to attack my king somehow, etc. Rook e1, there's always... I'm not, not, not queen g6 at this very moment... But, uh, like, taking f7 and queen g6 and whatever. So I played knight d5 to actually win a little bit of time back on the clock, because obviously I'm down. I have to talk. My opponent does not have to talk. I don't think my opponent has a YouTube channel. Um, but, uh, yeah. 
I wanted to play knight d5 kind of quickly. Okay, so now now I'm thinking to just uh, to just take that. The alternative is to play bishop and take with the with the bishop, but I think I'm going to take. Okay, so now we have a bit of a a freeze here. Um, queen c7 is my first instinct. I know that f4 is going to happen, and maybe even f5. So I have some idea to maybe. Well, the question is, which way do I want to castle, yeah? Which way do I want to castle? What if I play bishop e7 and attack the h4 pawn? I'm still keeping my options open. The thing is, if I, if I castle this way, it's going, to be, it's, going to, it's going to be an insane game. You know, he's going to attack me here. And the thing is that my attack is slower, it feels like, because all of my opponent's pawns are far away. In general, if you're going to pawn storm somebody like this, they need to have something in front of the pawns. Like, the way I have something here... It's, it's moved up to the third, my third rank, or sixth rank, right? So when the opponent's pawn gets to g5, it at least hits something. This pawn, if the pawn gets to f5, it at least hits something. I can push all my pawns... Okay, that's a surprising move. I did not expect that. I can push all my pawns, but I, I don't think it actually leads anywhere. Okay, so knight b6, right? That's probably the best move. I cannot imagine that I have... I don't know where else I would be putting my knight. And I guess, is he going to trade queens with me and play like b3? So I guess, I guess no one's going to attack anybody. We're just going to have a very balanced game, potentially, if we trade queens. c4 is a very surprising move. I thought, oh, he doesn't even want to trade queens. Okay, so he's setting up an attack on my queen. I should move my queen. Um, yeah, even bishop takes h6 is an idea. Okay, so I think just queen c7 is normal. And yeah, now the question is, what do I do about my king side? I, I, I probably want to go this way, and I... Wow. That move looks absurd, but is it... Could it just be very strong? Because like, it's like hard for me to move now. Interesting move. Okay. How about h5? There's no blunder there, right? I'm not blundering anything. The point of h5 is that he can't put his knight there. He also can't play that move. And I can play g6, which prevents f4. This looks like a pretty flexible move. There's no c5. Maybe rook d8. Bishop a5 is actually a, a very annoying move. Very annoying. Uh, my king uh, really can't... I can't castle now this way. Can't castle through check. I could trade my rook. Yeah, and so now this is my idea. And I, I don't actually... I don't hate this. I kind of like what I did. I sort of thwarted his pawns on the king side. Um, I think he should move his queen and put his knight on e4. So I think he should play like queen d4. But that might run into pawn to c5. He might not want that. So maybe queen... No, but then knight takes c4. Maybe queen e2? And knight e4 to get in? Yeah, he has to keep this protected. He has to add some pressure. Oh, same idea. Yeah, so he wants to play c5. And uh, if I'm not careful now, I could run into some problems. So... <clears throat> I could castle, but c5 is very strong. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to play c5 myself so that I can slide my queen up a square. I think that's what makes the most sense right now. You know, the good thing is that because I did something to this pawn called fixing, I fixed the pawn on that square, um, I think in the future I'm going to have some decent prospects. Okay, I'm going to play queen c6. He's going to play knight here, I would imagine. Uh, and then I think I'm just going to walk my king to safety. I mean, it looks kind of nuts, but I don't... I don't exactly see how I lose there. I've also managed to unpin myself. So I can bring my knight back into battle. Like, I can try to trade knights, potentially. I just have to worry about him exploding the position at some point. But his time is ticking. He's down like 30 seconds, and I don't know. I, I mean, I'm sure white is better, but I, I, I don't exactly know like how white proceeds. Because g4, I, I'm going to take, and then h5, I'm going to take. Also, if he plays g4, I can take this, and he can't take with his rook, because then I take his rook over there. So I, I, might, I might be just uh, just getting to the point of consolidation, even though it looks kind of ab absurd the way I'm doing it. But <coughs> And also, if I trade queens, like if the queens just disappear right now, I'm not going to get attacked, although I will have some weaknesses. 
We've built up a one minute time advantage as he's trying to sort of figure out how to actually get to me, which is nice. I like time advantages. And then if maybe if we just gotta figure out how to get totally consolidated, because the, the risk with playing backwards moves like this, okay, B3 is just, this is the move of a player who doesn't know how to proceed in a position, which I like. I like to see that. Now I'm thinking walk my king, bring my rook, or back up with the knight. <clears throat> um, if I play rook d8, I guess I'm threatening to take... Right, so that probably looks smart. And then I can always still play king g7. Yeah, let's play rook d8. I'm, I'm going to keep this where it is for now. Because I feel like my, my piece and his piece sort of balance each other out in terms of levels of stupidity. Oh, but that's actually annoying because my plan was to play a6 and maybe there's just no 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 that there's no way that works really okay, i'm gonna play a6 i guess he can take and then come back but feels like i'm 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 walking in the right direction here i i think if his knight goes to a7 it's it, that's just ludicrous like, he keeps me paralyzed, but I, I don't see how his knight ever gets rescued. Yeah, he takes. I'm going to take. Let's also not forget that's still always a weak pawn. Uh, now I'm thinking just king g7. This is a little bit weak. Okay, king g7. Now my other rook is getting into the game. g3 hangs a rook in one move. I'm expecting some f5. I mean, f5 is generally a move or like, you know, something along those lines. Okay. Queen trade. I can take, take knight d7. I'm not a fan of that. This pawn is soft. Uh, but I might have to trade queens here. Take, take, knight d7, take, take, and then rook d1 at the end. Man, queen e4 is an annoying move. Oh, man. Um, I think I'm going to take and come back. Oh, I blundered. Oh, my God. I just, I just made such a stupid mistake. I calculated bishop takes, rook takes, rook d1 attacking this, and I would just go pawn to b6. But he has knight f6, and he's just winning. I just completely forgot about that. Whoops. Yeah, rook d1 is just crushing. I mean, I mean, what a... Wow. Not only is it crushing, I basically just, like, lose on the spot. Because I can't move. He's gonna take... Oh my, oh my god, this was so bad. I was just gonna go here, but I forgot that I, he can go in this direction. And was that the longest I spent on any move? Yeah, and generally the rule of thumb is that if you... If you spend a long time, you're going to do something stupid. Yeah, I just have to resign. I mean, there's, it, it's, it's completely lost. Going to do a very quick analysis uh, of these games, um, and starting with game one, uh, just to quickly show you how I learn from all these games that we play. So obviously, the opening was, was, was fine. Basically, what I do in the opening is I look at which point uh, I sort of forgot my theory. So first of all, queen d4 I should have spent no time on at all because knight takes f7 is just the best move here for white. Uh, but sometimes you don't see a position for a long time, and you're like, you start asking questions, which is good. You shouldn't just lazily play all the moves. Uh, but here, because I spent so much time kind of contemplating queen d4, I was already feeling like I needed to play a little bit faster, and I absolutely played the wrong move. Uh, the best move here is knight d7. Like, I, and, and after bishop f4, I suppose it transposes. Um, but there is actually some benefit after bishop f4. Like, you, you don't need to play knight f6. You can actually... Maybe play queen a5 check is like an option. You can take on e5, bishop e5, queen a5. Like something like this, you can just play in a position that's a bit unique. You don't need to, uh, you don't need to just kind of offhand play knight f6 and like this. And uh, I, haven't, I haven't played this position in a while, actually. I, it, it's, it's kind of funny because I've been playing so much Tartakauer and uh, it's good. This was, I'm, I'm very happy I got some good practice here. So first of all, this whole plan was bad. Uh, this is like not what you want at all because this knight in many cases is just a target for the move c4 which is exactly what happened in the game 
and I can't go to g4 to attack this pawn, and I sort of give him everything he wants. And even with that, like, here, what he should have done is he should have not played c4, should have went knight h5, he should have punished me immediately. I remember I was talking about during the game the concept of the opposite side castling. Like, he's just killing me here. I mean, his attack is just much faster than mine. Um, it's already plus four. Uh, but c4 right away does give him just a permanent, like, slight advantage. And, and I mean, after bishop a5, my position was just kind of depressing. Um, I tried to do something exotic, uh, but he's just better. Uh, he's just better. And for the duration of this game, I was, I was actually still sort of consolidating and figuring things out. And uh, right here is where he, he, he actually made a mess up. Like, I should have taken. Uh, and then I should have played knight to c8 defending this. And then slowly boot him, king g7, and rook d8. This is the moment in the game where I have my, my best moment to, to actually finally consolidate and deal with his pressure. Uh, and instead of dealing with his pressure, I play a6, which allows him to maintain still pressure on my position, transfer his knight back to an active square. And this is a really instructive moment, perhaps the most instructive of the entire game. Uh, the fact that you can get basically a completely winning position by offering a queen trade. That is very high-level stuff. Uh, I didn't even, like, it didn't even occur to me that he would want to do that. You know, I was, like, only thinking about my own ideas. Granted, our time was low, but it's just a really nice kind of way of showing to, to what degree a position can be stretched thin if you just remove one of the most powerful pieces. You don't even need to do a devastating attack. Black is just a move, like, a move short of full consolidation. And, of course, I thought for a long time, and here I just simply blundered that there's knight f6, and he just wins because I'm totally paralyzed. You know, if, if you give me just, like, a, a, a move and a half more, okay. I mean, he, he's not going to get that because I'm going to defend myself. But rook d1 and the game is just over. I resign because I cannot prevent all this loss. I'm just completely lost. So, yeah, very silly blunder. Uh, and um, I could have been avoided. But, but honestly, queen e4 is just an awesome move. I mean, queen e4 is just a fantastic move. And uh, I, I should have actually taken. I should have taken so that... Even though I'm surrendering control of the open file, my bishop is not a target here. But that's what happens. Uh, let's go for d4. c4. Whoa. The accelerated... This is the accelerated Queen's Indian. So, this is an interesting system. It, it's basically Black forgoes playing e6 uh, and tries to fight against the center like with the knight and bishop, it's not very good because of queen c2, and normally after e4, like, there is already a bishop here. So black, one of black's options here is to play the move d5 and explode the center, but I think white just gets very good play here. So, like, you take, and th th this, this, this system has never made a whole lot of sense to me with black. I've actually tried it with black. But in general, if you're going to be playing against, you know, uh, some standard setup, you really should have a pawn on e6. So now I take the center with two pawns. That's the most principal decision. In general, if you can take the center with a c pawn and an opponent's knight or bishop ends up in the center, that's very good because now you can just put d and e. So you just, you just have a full center and that's principles of chess, you know? So if he takes on c3, I take with a b pawn. Yeah, he probably has to take... And now, now there's a line where black tries to, like, really blow up the center, like, with e5. And that's the benefit of not playing e6. And this has gotten popular recently. But uh, I, don't, I don't really believe in it. Um, you know, okay, so yeah, e6 is very solid. Now I don't exactly remember what to play. I, I would imagine just developing like a normal person is probably fine. Uh, I've also had games, I, I will take another pawn to the center here, but I think, I don't really know. I don't know the theory, so I'm going to follow basic principles, which is just put pieces in the center of the board. Uh, and then when my opponent castles this way, which is what I'm anticipating will happen, then we'll try to start some sort of attack. I've also played games where I've given a check, and I force a pawn to, but I, I don't know if that's necessary. Let's play bishop d3. And on castles, I have some attacking ideas. You also, I feel like, can just play h4, h5, like, at any moment. So I... I, I don't know. I've, I've never gotten this with uh, why anybody would play this, but opponent is feeling brave. Um, yeah, so let's play, let's play h4. 
might as well. And there are some ideas to play e5, and then Greek gifts somehow with the knight on g5, and then something like this. Now, of course, I could have also castled, but it's a blitz game, so I'm not really sure why you would... Why you would I, I, I'm just looking at the weather report on my computer, and it says flood. Oh, no, now it says cloudy. It updated. Flood is a pretty drastic weather warning, I must say. That's uh, it's really no joke. Okay, so c5 is a standard way of attacking the center of the board. e5 is no longer possible because e5 was possible a few moves ago. Since I would be doubling my pawns, isolating them, making them a bit weak. But now if you play e5, I just take with a knight and then I come back and I call you an idiot. So you, you probably need to go c5. And then I think there's some computer ideas where I can push. I can also just not do anything, but I can also push and like open up like this. But okay, so this is one <coughs> kind of absurd idea uh, that I really like. This is a very exotic way of bringing another attacker to the party. If my queen and bishop were flipped, this might be game over already. I would just play e5 and queen h7 mate. But at this point, I, I might have five pieces very soon attacking a king yeah and you see how quickly he plays this because he kind of understands that if he doesn't play fast right now he might just get completely destroyed uh in fact don't i just wait a minute takes takes check if king h7 i have e5 wait isn't isn't this just crushing because if takes, check, king h7, I play e5, right? If takes, check, king h8, I play queen d2 or queen c1. How does he protect me from taking the pawn? Oh my god. Well, he has to play bishop g5, what I think is going to happen. He has to play bishop g5. Uh, that will somehow block my attack for a move. But that's why I have the pawn on h4. And that's also why I have my rook and bishop. So this is a case where one, one guy is about to potentially attack the king with five pieces. And he has no defenders. Like, pawns don't really count. You know, pawns are sort of like a layer of defense. But uh, he has no bishops or knights guarding his king at all. So bishop takes h6 is just, is just really brutal. Because even if he strikes my center... Actually, his best move here might be to play c4. That might be his best move. To try to deflect me away from this diagonal. And then I would have two hanging bishops. Actually, c4 is a very reasonable move. And then I, if I play rook g3, he takes my bishop. I take check. Then I take here. I mean, I'm probably still attacking very strongly, but at least he gets rid of a very important bishop. Hmm. Yeah, maybe rook g3 first was more accurate. I didn't even think about c4 because it's just such a it's such an absurd move like to, to deal with an attack on your king. Uh, c4 is annoying. Okay, he doesn't play it, which is yeah. I mean, he basically plays a move that's like yeah, yeah, yeah you got me. Uh, yeah. So now rook g3 is an idea. So he can't take my bishop. He might go here. I'll play e5. E5 straight away. Also, it just looks rook g3 looks very strong. I mean, I want my rook here anyway, so this is like by far the least unflexible move I have. Aha, king h8, this is smart. So then if e5, he's going to take my bishop. And then if I play queen d2, yeah. Okay, but what, if I, what about queen d2 now or queen c1? What if I defend my bishop and then I'm still setting up e5 ideas? e5, gh. Um, if I take on f6, he takes with the queen. I mean, I could just go back. <laughs> just go back and pretend like nothing is happening in this position. I might just do that. You can also play bishop g5. Bishop g5 is a pain in the ass kind of move. You can also play bishop e3. I really don't know. I don't know. I would need to think here. And I don't want to think. <laughs> A position is so good, it's like, why am I thinking about my moves, you know? It's not even fair. Yeah, I think I like queen c1. But I don't, there's no knockout punch with queen c1, I guess. I mean, queen c1 is so, it looks so natural. I just keep my bishop here. He can't take it. If he takes, I'm going to play e5. 
or take on d4 first, but I was thinking to play e5. Bishop f3, pawn f6 is just winning. If he takes this, I take this. He takes this, I... I mean, it's just game over. Yeah. I'm, I'm ripping his, the defense of his king completely apart here. Again, five attacking pieces versus one or zero defenders. So I can afford my center collapsing just because it's, so, it's just impossible for him to guard his king. It's nice. Yeah, I kind of like that. No steps backwards, just keep the bishop here. You know, queen takes h6, and uh, yeah, we just get a nice brutal assault on the king, which is actually the reason I stopped playing this with black, this accelerated queen's Indian, because if white just follows basic opening principles, like taking the, the full center and having good development, he just resigns. Not much to analyze in this game, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, again, if you're gonna play accelerated Queen's Indian, <coughs> um, then, you know, you, you, you gotta understand that when you're surrendering control of the full center like this, you have to be really exotic and aggressive in your counterplay. And, you know, E5 is, is, is a good move, in my opinion, to try to blow everything up, because this is just not very good for white from a structural standpoint. Uh, but when you play e6, I mean, it's just it's just hard because white gets everything. Like white is just convincingly already better. Uh, and and I didn't have to play h4. Of course, I could have played bishop e3. I could have played bishop f4. Just castled. H4 is just a you know he has to go c5, like now. He has to play c5, and then we would have had a game. Then we would have had a game. I, I mean, I I don't know what would have happened, but just one move, just one move allows me to get my rook here, which is just a fascinating idea, by the way. Just keep this in mind. This is one of the reasons you can delay castling sometimes, is to get attacks like this. And now, all the difference in the world. Bishop takes h6, which chess.com deemed a brilliant move. Thank you, chess.com. And I was right. The computer, the only thing it likes is this piece deflection to deflect my bishop. Although it's still, it's still obviously winning. Rook takes g7. Oh, it doesn't even like rook g7. It likes this which is kind of nuts. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, bishop f6, and now, yeah, now, now rook g3, and then queen c1. This, this move, queen c1, to get... Uh, what can I say? I said everything about this game that I wanted to while it was getting played, but we're going to jump back and just quickly analyze it as it, as it sort of happened. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to have to move to game number three. I mean, in, in, for this one, you know, if, if you're going to try to learn... Uh, sidelines of openings that aren't that aren't the main position just understand that at the end of the day the basic principles of chess do apply a dominant control of the center of the board uh, and then a coordinated attack on a king when you have four or five more attacking pieces than there are defenders will lead to things like sacrifices a full piece for a pawn uh, just to open up the king because you've got backup so let's move to the last game Okay, opponent, he goes for c4 in this game um, I've played some played some moderns uh, I've played uh a lot of different stuff against c4. Let's go for c4, e5, the most principled. Okay, so c4, e5, knight, c3. I'm gonna go knight f6. Let's see what he wants. Is he gonna play for the four knights? Is he gonna play g3? He plays g3. So, yeah, now, now there's, a, there's a handful of moves here. c6, d5 is in general the most, the most principled way to play this with black. Uh, I am going to play, there's so many lines, let's play knight c6 and bishop b4. So it's, it's, it's a standard antidote, uh, to play a position where you try to play bishop into knight, and then just kind of put pawns on dark squares. It's like, it's like a Rosalimo Sicilian, and just so you understand, like e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. It's the same thing, sort of, right? I'm putting my king's bishop into the knight. Here I'm putting my king's bishop into the knight. Okay, plays knight d5. It's not a, not a bad move. Uh, bishop c5 is fine here. Knight takes d5 is not, it's not really a move you want to play. You'd rather him take you. Uh, I think I'm going to go... F I don't know what I'm going to play. Let's play a5. So... He takes me, I at least get the opening of my, my rook. Now here, probably a3 is, is, is normal for white, but if, if you allow me to put my pawn on a4 in the future, it's going to be very tough for you to expand your queen side. It's a very interesting uh, a piece and in kind of structural batter, uh, batter, battle here. I'm not going to go bishop c5. I'm actually going to play bishop e7. So I, 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 would, I would, again, I'm, I'm, I'm totally welcoming this exchange. 
Uh, I don't want my bishop on c5. He'll play e3, knight e2, d4. It's completely fine. It's, I just don't want it. But also with a5, I have now prevented him from, you know, just kind of standard queenside expansion. Uh, plays b3. It's a completely reasonable move. I'm going to castle my king. He's going to play bishop b2. And now... I don't, I don't know how to proceed. I mean, d6... A ro rook e8 is always very good. So, rook e8, and then maybe I'm even going to put my bishop back on f8. And then he can't even get it. So, I'm, I'm kind of threatening to remove my bishop from the offer of the exchanges. Uh, and, then, and then proceed. If he doesn't take, then this knight sort of stays here. You might be wondering, why is nobody taking each other? It's because he doesn't really want to move his knight three times in the opening and get nothing for it. If he's going to do that, he's going to take my bishop. And I'm not doing it because there's no reason to give him the open file and kind of that, that deadbolt pawn on d5. So structurally, me taking on d5 is just not always right. It's just not recommended. I, I don't want that to happen. So that's why I did that. Uh, but this is, a, this is a close battle for sure. Okay, d3 is a odd move. Generally, you want to go here. but And now I, I, I've been delaying d6 for some time. So I'm, gonna, I'm not even going to allow him to get my bishop anymore. I've been delaying d6 because ideally I would play d5 in one go in the future. But if I'm no longer going to have that possibility, then... Okay. Now he's removed an eye of, off this pawn. So part of me actually wants to take. But okay, I'm going to play d6. And uh, I, I think I want to move my knight and then play c6. This is kind of a common thing kick out his his knight somehow but as the game progresses i'm i'm definitely going to start considering more and more taking on d5 i think it's going to lose its appeal for my opponent i just have to figure out the right way to do it once you do it you can't really go back you can't really rescind the offer okay so let's play bishop to g4 so my idea with bishop to g4 of course, h3 is very possible, uh, but my... Yeah, okay, he just plays it without even... <laughs> I, I had some... I was thinking I had some galaxy brain idea. Uh, now I'm going to come back to e6, I think. So then this pawn could be a bit of a target. I've sort of baited that pawn forward. I might play bishop e6 and queen d7. He might play king h2. Uh, in, in hindsight, I, I maybe should have played bishop f5, queen d7. Like, taken try to make the battery and then go trade the light squared bishop, which is what you, you frequently want to do. Bishop, battery, queen, like this. Uh, sorry. Yeah, bishop, battery with the queen. But this way I'm attacking this. So he plays knight g5. Uh, if I take, take, and take on d5, attacking this, he'll take on f7. I play h6. Take, pawn takes. I'm just trying to crowd the center with pawn. I don't, I don't want to give him my light squared bishop. <laughs> okay. I might just waste all this time and just go back to where I came from, which is kind of funny. Like d7 or something. So now I have a threat to take on d5 and then take his knight, which is sort of, which is sort of hilarious. Uh, but at least, you know, structurally we're keeping things intact. Yeah, so... Knight d5. And then maybe, what about knight d5, knight d4 or something? No, knight d5 he might take with the bishop. Let's play h6. Let's kick out his horse. Ah, interesting. In between move to transfer the knight to e4. And then what? Transfer it back? Oh no, is there another knight coming to d5? Oh my god. That's terrifying. All right, I'm going to hang out on the king side. And maybe launch an attack. Yeah, knight c3 is actually a super funny idea. But I do have my own active ideas. For example, like queen h5. Maybe I could have gone back to d8 and played like on this diagonal. Just going back to d8 felt so... Bleh, felt so passive. e3. Flexible move. I really want to play queen h5. Uh... I, I, I kind of like that I can bait g4 and maybe even crawl forward ever so slightly and continue to weaken his king. And if he plays king h2, I don't know, that just feels like a win for me. <laughs> 
King is stuck defending. Oh, Queen D1 is such an annoying move. Stopping my attack on H3 by targeting my queen. That is an annoying move, man. Why did you have to play that? Now I'm going to have to like go back. I don't want to trade queens. It's so... That's so lame, but I also don't want to, you know, I don't want to repeat. Nah, I'm going to, I'm going to go back. I don't want a queen trade. Yeah, he plays knight back to c3. That was his idea. Uh, so this is one idea. Because the knight's coming to d5. I mean, I, I, I really, I really have to be ready for that. Bishop f5 is an idea to maybe force. He still goes knight d5, maybe. I don't know. Doing a lot of shuffling this game. I'm not I'm not I'm not in love with the way I'm playing this. But like again, it's because it's a very close game, we can both afford these like one moves there, one move back, etc. So so it's a lot of jostling and positioning. Like just ever so slightly changing his position by one pawn move will block his bishop from the game forever. It will grant me the access to the d4 square. But I expect at some point his pawns might just start rolling forward because he has a lot of space. That Hangs a pawn. No? Can't they, can't they just play bishop c2? That's kind of an absurd thing. Like, bishop c2 is such a weird move. You normally don't get stuff like that in games. Just straight up a fork, I think. Now the only question is, am I supposed to take on d4? Or am I supposed to... Leave the d4 pawn and just take on b3? And there's no danger levels, I guess. There's no bishop e4 because I just come back, right? Yes, yeah, so now that, that's, that's my question. Do I take on d4 and open up the position or what? Before I... I think I'm just going to play, play bishop takes b3. I think it's just a very simple winning of a pawn and I don't need to do too much. c4 is still hanging. D e Ooh, that would have been an insane... Free move. Uh, bishop takes, knight takes, bishop takes. Alternatively, I can just defend my pawn. Like rook c8 or something. But rook c8, he might play rook c1 and my, my rook gets stuck. I mean, my bishop. I got so excited to win a pawn, I forgot the names of the pieces. I can play a4 maybe. It's a very strange position. Bishop c4 feels right. But I also could be really weakening myself. And this move looks so cramped. Something like a4. Just making sure that my bishop is sort of always protected. I'm a pawn up, but my bishop is out of the game, at least for now. And I'm gonna have to find a way to untie my position. Yeah, my bishop is, is annoying for, for him and for me. And I think now the pace of the game is gonna speed up a lot. So I'm going to have to probably move my knight. I ideally trade it, but if I trade it now, then he's going to take on e5. So yeah, in all likelihood, I'm going to have to take on d4. I'm not pushing because even though I'm closing out the bishop, it just feels, just feels like I'm closing the center. And that's it. Uh, 97. Let's take on d4. Get some clarity in the position. Bishop takes, of course, I would have just traded. Oh, well, 97 isn't even that good. Because b7 is hanging at the end. That's nuts. I think I have to go for this. There also is knight f4. That's the thing. You spend time and, and then, and then yeah, and then see, and he just plays it instantly. I spent all this time trying to make it work. And then I couldn't. And then I blundered. Like, I just blundered that he has that move. And, okay, well, we've both decided to give each other pawns. I'm going to play rook b8. He's going to go back. And it's just a brand new game. That's, that's basically it. I don't know who's better. Like, I actually have no idea. Okay, so knight g6 just feels correct. Knight d5 c6 feels... Maybe just bring back the queen and shut up. Something like queen d7. Yeah, I have to play a bit faster because whenever I get too low on time and then start spending it, I do something stupid. It's just like, it's just a vicious cycle. If the queen heads out, I can take on c4 and take on b2. But my knight is just totally 
stupid. It's and my bishop. It's this bishop that I retreated a long time ago. Just doesn't look very good. Okay. Maybe until now. Maybe I can start bringing it into the game. If f4, I can just sacrifice, I think. I think my pressure on this knight and this queen is very good. Okay, the bishop is getting out of the way. So let's go bishop g5. Yeah, may, may, maybe, maybe activating this bishop and then ultimately trading will be decent for me. Uh, bishop e3. So it takes. Is this another fork? Oh, he has bishop d2. Oh my god. Bishop d2 moves that out of the way and protects this. But it's still, it's still kind of complicated. Bishop a5. That is aggressive. Okay, so I can take on e3. He's going to end up taking on c7. Forking my rook. And I'm thinking to just like, so I have rook c8 take and then take on c4. But... The other option is to is to go. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, I'm gonna do this. But then I'm gonna go rookie too. I'm not gonna take on c4. If he plays here, I have bishop d5. I'm going for this bishop. I really, I, I, I like, I like how passive he is. So c5, bishop d5, and it just seems like it's really tough for him to make a move. I just need my knight to get into the game. That's it. So here comes bishop back. Yeah, rook g1. But my god, this looks so passive. Now where is my... Where is my knockout punch? Maybe rook d2 or something. This rook is a little stuck. Um, King H1, yeah, so I was thinking I can sacrifice here, but maybe I just totally overestimated this. Should have played rookie 8, that's what I should have done, anticipating King H1. Uh... Oh no, and there goes my time. I'm gonna go back and probably blunder because I spent time. I was gonna play some ridiculous move like bishop b7. No, bishop b7 looks dumb. Yeah, I should have taken the pawn on c4. That's what I should have done. But it happens. So the problem is this knight, honestly. I can't find a way to get my knight into the game. That knight was a problem. C6, rook d8. No, 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 this is protected. What am I talking about? Yeah, his pawns are very strong. I, I mean, I, I... At some point, I'm going to have to, like, chop them. I don't, I don't even know how. It just goes g4. Yeah, I totally screwed this up. Wow. None of my moves made any sense. Like, my, my last, like, uh, five or six moves were just so bad. Yeah, and then again, this I just can't move. I'm playing without a piece that just can't participate. It's so frustrating. Oh, he's going to go d6 next. Ah, he might have messed up now. Maybe. Because he gave me that, but I think he'd probably still go d6, which is just so stupid. They could just play this move and get away with it. Yeah, he goes for it, but like, wow. His position is so good. He can lose material like that and still, still be okay. Taking h7? I mean... I'm going to have to lose my rook anyway, because even if there, he's going to play c7. Yeah, and probably... Oh, I think rook d2 just, like, very cleanly wins, but... I don't think I can be comparing different winning ideas. Bishop a6. I have one remaining trick, maybe? 
which is here bishop b7. That is all I can say that I have left. Uh, let's go knight f4. Like, his king is actually kind of weak. It's kind of weak. That's as much credit as I'll give my position. But his king is potentially kind of weak. Let's play knight takes h3. If he still plays c7, I have bishop b7. What? What is that? His moves are starting to confuse me. He takes, I have knight f3. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> somehow, somehow the game is still going. Uh, bishop e4. I gotta move. I gotta make a move. Rook d4. Uh, rook d4, yeah? Rook d4. I'm gonna go back to a6. So still, if he pushes, I have this move. Okay, bishop here. <laughs> still, if this, then this. I mean, I'm sure it's lost, but at least it's funny. It makes for good theater. Uh, f5. I'm sure I, like, missed a chance somewhere to maybe save the game. Maybe. C7 should just win. His king is very well protected now. Oh my god, what? Why did he go that way? Uh... Yeah, I gave him a check, but I think... I think this is just lost, like rook c1, and... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Game is still going, for reasons I don't fully comprehend, but... Okay. I guess he's just gonna go here and make a queen. That's probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That was weird. That was a very, very strange game. So this game obviously was super long, uh, and if you've had the patience to make it, which is something like 30, 35 minutes into this video, uh, I, I, I think we should probably pick it up around here. You know, uh, there wasn't... Um, I mean, bishop g4 was, was just not a very smart move. At this point in the game, I should have went with my gut. I talked about allowing this and transferring my knight to a place that I could have attacked the pawn. And then what I should have done here, which I didn't really realize during the game, is I should have targeted that pawn right away. And that would have led to a position that looks something like this, where white still has the bishop and still has the open file, but doesn't have a dominant grasp on the center. So I absolutely should have liquidated when I had the chance, when for a moment white does not have sufficient defense of this pawn. And if the move e4 gets played, well, that's great, because now the bishop is just simply blocked from the game, and I can still play c6, I can try to go trade the light squared bishop, but I didn't, I didn't do that. I didn't understand the structural nature of the position, and I spent a lot of time sort of dilly-dallying dilly and sort of doing nothing, and uh, I should have 100% traded queens, apparently. Uh, trading the queens would have been to my advantage. And then my opponent blundered, and actually I was, uh, my, my gut instinct here was right. I should have taken on d4 first, because uh, if, if my opponent were to do this and go for this whole line, I have rook to e2. So I calculated in the game that uh, I, I, I don't want to allow it. And the reason why is because if you look, if you remember from the game, I can't play bishop c4, knight c7, rook e2. My rook can't teleport through two pawns. So actually, despite my opponent blundering a full pawn, the position that I got here is still fine for white. It's 0, 0, 0, despite white being a full pawn down, because I have no moves. I just legit, I have no moves. My bishop can't move if I play knight d8. I don't know, knight f4 and white is already better, apparently. So it's just crazy that even though my opponent blundered a pawn, my decision to not open the e-file before I took the pawn was so drastic. And it actually mattered so much. And uh, I gave back the b7 pawn, but I was trying to give back the b7 pawn in a way that I would trade the knight. And I didn't get to do that. So actually, now it's just a brand new game. And obviously from here, it's sort of chaotic what ends up happening. Uh, I opted to, to damage the structure, 
And then the biggest decision and the biggest mistake here, like, just, of course you take the pawn. And then you move on and, 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 and fight another day. I got really excited to kind of go for this. But somehow, despite my opponent, like, crunch, you know, cocooning like this, it, he, at the end of the day, he still, he still got this. And it's going to take me some time to get, and get into the game. And I 100% should have went for the rook activation. Because if king h1, I can sack. This is very instructive. When you have a pin like this, you go for a position like this, where you just have a dominant grasp of the pin. And you just you, you use it to your advantage. You buy some time and you still get this. Still, a white could be winning here because of the c pawn. So, yeah. Uh, a bit of a rush decision for sure here. And the lesson that, uh, that, I should, uh, that I should go for here is keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple, stupid. Kiss. K-I-S-S. Keep it simple, stupid. Just take on c4. Like, uh, and, then, and then you'll have time to bring this knight into the game, and this bishop still might be passive later. But I didn't keep it simple. I tried to go for, like, maximum dynamics, and this is one of my weakest uh, points as a player, actually. Just not only recognizing my opponent's defensive resources, but also understanding that they're, uh, they're just... They're, like, the evaluation of the position after those defensive resources. Granted, my opponent did not convert this perfectly. Uh, he could have just played rook d2 here, like I mentioned, and he actually gave me some hope. Like, for example, I mean, c7, bishop b7, and the king is getting swarmed. I'm just trying to see if I ever messed up. Yeah, actually, after g5, it's like not even clear what white's next move is, which is kind of nuts. I'm gonna play like knight f4, maybe get this g4 pawn. Just kind of crazy. But of course, I... Unfortunately, it was just like, I'm probably going to lose this game anyway, so I, I, I played g5 a little bit late, and even with all this drama, the pawn is still going to promote. So, the lesson of this game is honestly in the opening structure, uh, way back when, taking on d5 at, like, at the right moment and then breaking, and I'm going to learn that, and I'm just going to learn that, but uh, keep it simple stupid, honestly, and not getting too low on time. So, one and two in this episode, but good to have you all back. Uh, for this training and the next tournament is in 11 days. So hopefully we do one or two more of these Let me know if you made it this far in the video. Let me know if you're enjoying the faster format. I'll see you in the next one. Get out of here